quick as possible tour of the garden so you sort of see what's happening and what needs to be done. You can see we've got a lot of overgrowth of certain things that need to be managed, uh, including the weeds that are in and around the still thriving elderberries and around the raspberries. So this is the permaculture display garden area and Elmery has done an amazing job of getting this going. All of this beautiful green growth here is actually some barley. So we're trying to sort of outgrow some of the weeds and this can be tilled back into the garden and replenish the soil. But you can see we've been overtaken by these perennial weeds. This is meant to be the area where the squash will grow. It would be good to get this under control. And here too, um, we're going to see some barley growing here, which is good. But we're going to be planting some pumpkins in along this line. And so a lot of these excessive weeds really need to go too. The carrots have been, they are coming up, but they are sort of struggling. And this area needs to be weeded. Uh, you can see some signs. We, we're trying to uh, man, manage impaction and keeping people from stepping too close to to it but it, i mean we do need to get in there and do some weeding this area has been taken over by fungus so we need to remove this we want to get these beds ready for planting more carrots not seeing much germination of the parsnips and we still need to get another package in here but all of this area needs to be weeded remove the fungus smooth it all out, remove some of these wood chips. And um, even in the back there, you can see, I've got a sign that says pull raspberry sprouts. They're great, you know, you can pull them up and you can try and transplant them. They probably won't really do very well right now. They might, you could try. Otherwise, what you could do is you could pull them and you can actually dry the leaves for tea. They're very good for women's health um, and they taste like black tea. So it's a good thing to drink. We need to weed out this section too. Again, just, you know, minimize any kind of competition for the squash that we're going to plant in here and just make it, you want airflow with big leafy plants. We don't want weeds to be necessarily be growing up in between. The brassicas are doing quite well because they were big, but we're, we're getting a lot of flea beetle. Not much we can do about it at this point. We just hope that these plants will make it through. Now this section here is the beets. The beets are starting to really take off, but so are the weeds. And so I've come in through here and I've done some weeding so that you can make sure that you know which is the crop and what is weed. So we have the rows where the beets are growing are marked by uh, a post here, but they, I've done some weeding. So it's, it's more obvious to see like, what is the beet? It's the, the red veined plant. You know, it's hard to say, are the weeds helping to uh, pull away the flea beetles from the crops we want? If we weed all the weeds, will they just go after our crops? <laughs> it's everything's an experiment at this point, but we don't want to smother out the beets, the crops that we want. And so, um, you know, trying to, to take care of this a little bit more would be ideal. Now there's going to be some spotty germination and so we have a pack of seeds here. We can always plant some more seeds where we're seeing no growth. The, all of the onions are doing well. They're kind of hard to see here, but they're there. Um, they do, they probably need maybe even a little bit of top dressing of compost or could use like a fish fertilizer emulsion drink just to get flourishing. Our broccoli and brassicas here are also doing fairly well. They're, they're happening to outgrow the flea beetle, but we do need, we are, we're having potato plants coming up on their own. And that also means that the potato beetle is coming out. So if you are here and you see potato beetles, sorry, they gotta go squish, squish, bye-bye. The peas are just not thriving, but they are growing. This rain that's gonna come may do the trick. Uh, we've got some, Green onions that are trying to come up. We've planted potatoes in here, and so we're marking everything off where we don't want you to walk is sort of blocked off. The rutabaga is germinating, so that's good. Celery is doing very well. The lettuce has managed to really take off too, and so it's just maybe doing some weeding in around here. You'll see too that I've made a mention of there's sunflowers growing within everywhere. We'd really like to actually have those transplanted. Now they don't love transplantation, but they can manage, especially if they're well watered. You have to really dig them up, like get around them, take as much soil as you possibly can. Like 
transferring a child from sleeping into a bed. You just scoop them up, you take the whole thing, blankets and all if you have to, to move them over into this area here, which is where we're going to have cucumbers. We're going to try the cucumbers to be as back, far back as possible so that things are accessible. And so we're going to do some low level crops here, like these salad turnips. Um, maybe we'll try a few other things, radishes. But the, tr the sunflowers can be transplanted within this area and maybe they'll work as um, things for the cucumbers to vine on. The kale, baby kale is really struggling to get through, but it is managing to grow. The spinach is doing all right. We've gotten a nice, we can still do another harvest of greens. This area needs to be weeded. And then, you know, these brassicas are managing. The peppers, they're gonna need some love. They need some heat. Still have yet to transplant some, or not transplant, but plant pole beans. We need to get the trellises up. Uh, the beans probably need some heat too. We're still waiting for some growth on potatoes. This spinach is about, it is bolting, so it's gonna need to be harvested. And then we're gonna be planting just some more bush beans interplanted in and amongst some lettuce. We've got a beautiful tray of lettuce to plant here, thanks to Loveland Acres. Thank you. More beans to plant. You'll see I've, I have signed, signaged the dickens out of this garden. And so I'm trying to make it really clear. And the yellow flag tape means needs to be done when it is complete. Remove the yellow flag tape and it can go back into the shed. This area here is where we're going to plant some tomatoes for this upcoming weekend if we don't get rained out. I hope not. The biggest posts are going to be for doing single vine growth for cherry tomatoes. So we're going to keep those towards the back and then we're going to have our bush tomatoes all in and around the front. We're keeping about a three foot distance between them and we're going to interplant with lots of things like this is actually a Tulsi, a holy basil. Uh, but we're going to be doing basils and parsleys and dills, as many sort of pest repellents, um, growth, accelerating plants, anything that we can. We've got some dill seeds here to plant. These all have labels for what needs to be planted still. So these have a plan. We're going to be planting some zucchini in there. So it is all growing. It is managing. It needs help. The weeds want to take over. Weeds always will to want to take over if we don't help manage them. And so we have signs around to sort of say what you could do, how you could help. Even a half an hour goes a long ways. It would be really great to have these irises weeded, but they are coming along beautifully. And, you know, I did mow the lawn last week, but uh, you, know, you know how that goes. And as you can see, the salad bar is doing great. Look at all that lettuce. The cucumber doesn't love it right now, but it's not really that warm for it. Tomato is hanging on. And we are starting to get some potato sprouts. Look at that. Potatoes. More potatoes. Those are all purple potatoes in there. I think these ones were russets. So things are looking good. It does need some help. We would love to have some extra hands. Let's hope it's only a light drizzle on Saturday because that's actually pretty nice gardening weather. If we get a good rain tomorrow, the soil will be really nice and, and easy to work in and it can be a great day for planting plants. Hope to see you.